Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're diving into router on a stick configuration using Cisco Packet Tracer. This setup allows us to use a single physical interface on a router to handle multiple VLANs, making it a cost effective and efficient way to connect different network segments. This setup will be using a Cisco 2901 router. a 2960 switch and four PCs. Our goal is to create multiple VLANs and configure the router to route traffic between them using sub interfaces. By the end of this video, you'll understand how to configure VLANs on the switch, set up sub interfaces on the router, and test connectivity between devices and different VLANs. So let's jump right in and get started. Let's connect them using the correct cables. Since we're connecting the router to a switch, we'll use a straight through Ethernet cable. Next, we'll connect our PCs to the switch using the same straight through cables. Each PC will be assigned to a different VLAN, which we'll configure shortly. First, we enter interface range mode to configure multiple ports at one. We do this with interface range fast ethernet 0 slash 1 dash 2. Now, we set these ports to access mode using the command switch port mode access. When we set a switch port to access mode, we're telling the switch that this port will only belong to one VLAN and will only carry traffic for that VLAN. This is important for devices like PCs, printers, and other end user devices that don't understand VLAN tagging. Since these PCs are in VLAN 10, we'll assign the ports to that VLAN with switch port access VLAN 10. Since VLAN 10 didn't exist before, the switch automatically creates it when we assign it to a port. We can confirm this later with the show VLAN brief command. Let's name the VLAN HR for the Human Resource Department. Now that we've assigned Fast Ethernet 01 and 0 slash 2 to VLAN 10, let's check our VLAN configuration using the show VLAN command. As you can see, by default, all switch ports start in VLAN 1, which is the native VLAN on Cisco switches. This means any port that hasn't been assigned to a VLAN will belong to VLAN 1 by default. Now, look at VLAN 10. The two interfaces we configure, Fast Ethernet 0 slash 1 and 0 slash 2, are now listed under VLAN 10, which we previously created for the HR department. The switch automatically updated the VLAN table as soon as we assigned these ports. Now, let's create VLAN 20. We'll name this one management. Once the VLAN is created, now we'll repeat the process for the other two interfaces to add it to that VLAN.
Now that we verify our VLAN configuration, let's move on to setting up trunking so the router can communicate with multiple VLANs using a single interface. Now that we've assigned VLANs to our ports, we need to configure trunking on gigabit 0 slash 1, which connects our switch to the router. This will allow the router to handle traffic from multiple VLANs over a single physical interface. To configure this, we enter the interface configuration mode for gigabit 0 slash 1 and set it to trunk mode using the command switch port mode trunk. This forces the port into trunk mode, allowing it to carry traffic from all VLANs instead of being restricted to just one. Finally, let's control which VLANs are allowed on this trunk. By default, a trunk allows all VLANs, but we only need VLANs 1, 10, and 20 to pass through. We can specify this with switch port trunk allowed VLAN 1, 10, 20. This ensures that only the VLANs we've configured are permitted, preventing unnecessary traffic from flowing through the trunk link. As we can see, no trunk is showing up because the other end of the link is still shut down. With our trunk set up, we are now ready to configure sub-interfaces on the router, allowing devices in different VLANs to communicate. Since we're using one physical interface, the G0-0 to handle multiple VLANs, we create sub-interfaces to logically separate the traffic for each VLAN. Let's start by creating a sub-interface for VLAN 10. Interface G0 slash 0 dot 10. Next, we need to tell the router which VLAN this sub interface belongs to by using 802.1Q encapsulation. We do this with encapsulation dot 1Q 10. See, this ensures that any traffic coming into the sub-interface is tagged as VLAN 10, and the router knows how to handle it. Finally, we assign an IP address to the sub-interface, which will act as the default gateway for VLAN 10. IP address 10.1.0.1. 255, 255.255.255.0. Now our router can handle traffic for VLAN 10 and route it to other VLANs when needed. We'll repeat this process for VLAN 20 next. Now that we've created our sub interface for VLAN 10 and 20, let's check if it's active using this command. Show IP interface brief. As you can see, our sub interfaces is listed. However, they are currently down, meaning they won't function yet. This happens because sub interfaces depends on the physical interface. If the main interface G0 slash 0 is shut down, all sub interfaces will also remain down. To fix this, we simply need to enable the main physical interface by using the no shutdown command. Let's do that now. 
Once we do this, we should see a message indicating that the interfaces has come up. And there we go. Our sub interfaces are now up and ready to route traffic between VLANs. With our sub interfaces fully operational, the next step is to test connectivity between VLANs and ensure everything is working properly. Let's move on. Now we need to configure static IP addresses on our PC so they can communicate with each other. Since we haven't set up a DHCP server yet, we'll assign the IPs manually. To do this, we go to each PC, open the IP configuration window, and enter the appropriate IP address, subnet mask, and default gateway for each VLAN. Now, let's do the same for PCs in VLAN 20 and assign them IPs in the 10200-24 subnet with a different default gateway. By manually assigning these IP addresses, we ensure that each PC is in the correct VLAN and can communicate with other devices in the same subnet. Now, let's test connectivity to confirm everything is working. First, let's test if a PC in VLAN 10 can reach its default gateway 10101. From PC1, we'll open the command prompt and type. And we're getting replies. This confirms that our router sub interface for VLAN 10 is up and reachable. Now, Let's check if PC1 can communicate with another PC in VLAN 10. And there it is, another success. This means devices within the same VLAN can communicate without any issues. Now, let's ping across VLANs to test if our router on a stick setup is correctly routing traffic between VLAN 10 and VLAN 20. So from PC1, we'll ping PC3, which is in VLAN 20. And we're getting replies. This confirms that our router is successfully routing traffic between VLANs, allowing devices in different networks to communicate. And that's it. We successfully configure router on a stick, allowing multiple VLANs to communicate using a single physical router interface. Our test confirms that. If you found this tutorial helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and drop a comment if you have any questions. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.